three more Hawkeyes announced their return to Iowa football in 2022, including a piece that could pay huge dividends for a struggling Iowa offense. More on that in a moment. Before we get to our video for today, a reminder, please subscribe. Please hit the like button for this video. Uh, both of those actions help us. It helps us to grow and to reach uh, a bigger audience. So again, appreciate the subscription and appreciate you liking this video. So the big news that we got just today, actually just moments before we are recording this, Charlie Jones, Iowa receiver Charlie Jones, has announced he will be returning for a sixth, yes, a Jordan Bohannon sixth season. He did redshirt. Of course, he had to sit out a year after leaving Buffalo um, before the transfer portal action really heated up and guys were able to basically get immediate eligibility almost regardless of what they uh, of their situation. So he, of course, is here now for a sixth year. What are the implications for the Hawkeyes? Well, that receiver room, uh, which needs to be strong to help a, a quarterback room that we've talked about, the struggles there behind center. And I know the offensive line has something to do with that. Um, you know, we'll talk a little bit later in the week about Alex Padilla and, and Spencer Petras. It sounds like both of those guys are returning, at least for the time being. Again, we'll explain that in a future video. Um, but Charlie Jones, not only for his receiving ability, but certainly what he's done on special teams. Now Iowa has its punt returner and kick returner back. That's huge. Absolutely huge. We saw uh, Charlie Jones flip a couple of games this year, specifically the Illinois game. It was a 10 nothing deficit uh, against the Illini, and Charlie Jones returns a kick for 100 yards, completely flips the script of that game. And had he not done that, maybe Iowa wouldn't have won the West. I think that's very much, very much possible. Uh, again, this this offense needs every little edge it can get. Charlie Jones provides that in the way of big-time special teams plays. I think he's got big-time play potential on offense, and I think Iowa's going to have to figure out a way this spring specifically to figure out how to get him open. Because to me, uh, and, and I, again, I, I'm just going from what I see sitting on my couch at home. Um, you know, I'm not there every weekend, unfortunately. But Charlie Jones has the ability to... Uh, run really crisp routes. Uh, he's got some big playtime speed. I mean, again, we're, we're talking about a guy who um, has great vision. We already know that from what he's done in special teams. But I think he's got the speed to be able to uh, bust a couple plays deep. We saw it against Minnesota uh, on a deep throw from Alex Padilla. So uh, if they can get Ch Charlie Jones more involved in the offense, he, he needs to be more involved. Let's be honest, Iowa needs to get his receivers more involved. They've got some playmakers out there, not only Charlie, but certainly Keegan and Arland. I'm talking about Keegan Johnson and, of course, Arlen Bruce the fourth. Those guys will be a year older. They'll have another spring under their belts, and this is an opportunity for Iowa to evolve this offense. Receivers have to be a bigger part of the game plan moving forward. I don't care if it's Alex Padilla or it's Spencer Petras or if it's Joey Labas. Receivers have to be more involved for Iowa's offense to take a step forward. But again, Charlie Jones coming back, his playmaking ability, uh, that is big for Iowa. And of course, we've seen them run uh, run him in the backfield, run him on some reverse action. So he's got an ability, he's got an innate ability of, of being kind of versatile uh, wherever he plays. So again, huge news that Charlie Jones is returning. We're going to look at the wide receiver room in just a moment. Before we do that, I want to also bring up the fact that we got news this week that Jack Campbell and Sam Laporta are both returning. Now, neither of those announcements were surprises to me, especially Sam Laporta. Tom Kakert was on our podcast about a month ago and, and was pretty confident that Sam would return. So, of course, he is back, which helps a tight end room that did lose Josiah Miaman to the transfer portal. Um, so, you know, that's significant. We heard he's headed to Florida International. Um, so, again, that's a factor. Uh, one less guy back there. But they do get Addison Estringa and Cale Vanderbush in for this 22 class, but neither of those guys will be enrolling early, I don't believe. So, um, again, Laporta being back is obviously huge. I think he's a future NFL tight end. And then, of course, you look over at uh, Jack Campbell, uh, you know, nation's leading tackler. Again, I didn't expect him to leave, but I think he would have probably been drafted third, fourth round would be my guess. So that's something to turn down, certainly. Um, and it's great to have him back. Sure tackler, obviously Seth Benson alongside him and, and we expect Justin, Justin Jacobs back uh, as well and they've got some depth back there of course they got Jaden Montgomery coming in in this class and they've got some guys behind uh, that top three again we'll see what happens with the cash we can call that a, a defensive back slash linebacker position could be Xavier Wampa could be a guy like Cooper DeGene we'll just have to wait and see so let's take a look at this wide receiver room with Charlie Jones returning 
this is what the room looks like. So as of January 13th, I've got these sorted based upon what we would expect as far as depth chart is concerned. So again, Johnson first, Bruce second, Charlie Jones, you'd have to put him in the top three, I think. I know Nico Regani's right there. They've got a real solid top four, assuming Nico stays. I have no reason to think Nico is leaving. I have speculated on that in the past because it seemed like his involvement uh, had diminished a bit, not to the degree that uh, Tyrone Tracy's involvement did, but certainly I, I wonder about that. You hope Nico stays because certainly I think he is a uh, really solid. Again, he had some drops this year. I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to deny that, but it, he is a solid commodity. You know what you're going to get from Nico at the big catch and touchdown against Penn State, of course. And then Brody Brecht, a kid I've, I've been excited about for quite some time when they grabbed him out of Ankeny. Um, you know, he's a, his, obviously a baseball player, but uh, really committed himself to, to football, and, and he's got some size at 6'3", 6'4", somewhere in there, um, possibly to fill an X position. We'll see what happens once Charlie Jones and Nico Regani graduate. Of course, Nico could stay for another year. This is his true senior year coming up. Um, but, again, we'll see what happens. Brody Brecht is a guy that uh, I would hope could evolve into a uh, Brandon Smith type. I don't think he's got necessarily the intangibles that Brandon did, but certainly has the size and the hands. Deontay Vines, a sophomore, will be back. And, of course, Jacob Bostic, true freshman and out of Illinois. He'll be coming in this summer, fall as well. Of course, Jackson Ritter also on here as a walk-on. He got some time early in the season. Wouldn't be surprised to see him on scholarship next year. Nolan Donald, Alec Wick, Jack Johnson, and then, of course, Graham Friedrichson out of uh, Urbandale. He'll also be coming in as a walk-on receiver. Um, so that's Iowa's wide receiver room. We know Iowa lost, as you see on the right, Tyrone Tracy. He uh, recently announced he'll be headed to Purdue. Desmond Hudson um, headed to UNI. Quavon Matthews still in the transfer portal, and Max Cooper, his eligibility has been exhausted. So that's the Iowa wide receiver room as it stands right now. Could Iowa go after somebody in the portal? It's possible. I haven't heard nearly as much uh, substance to Iowa's search for a receiver in the portal as I have heard. Of course, running back tweeted about that last night. Uh, he offered a kid out of Stanford. Um, and then uh, offensive line. We know Hunter Norzad out of Cornell will be visiting here, Iowa, uh, visiting Iowa here in the coming weeks. So uh, would not be shocked to see Iowa... Uh, supplement the depth but I think the room looking pretty good now that they've got Charlie Jones back and again his big play making ability can be huge for them but they've got to figure out a way to get him the ball more right they've just got to figure out a way to get these dynamic receivers the ball more and it starts with quarterback play and starts with play calling I think that'll be huge for as far as Iowa's development stepping forward offensively uh, the wide receiver uh, position is a big part of it. Appreciate you listening this afternoon. We'll be with you tonight for Iowa post game with Coach Gary Close after Iowa. Indiana men's basketball will be on live at about 10.05 p.m. Central Time right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm.